21-year-old Margot Mange was an ideal soldier. The former Colorado State soccer most valuable player proved herself in Iraq as a military police officer and a Humvee gunner. Eventually promoted to sergeant, she was loved by her fellow soldiers for her gung-ho attitude and ready smile. She was even featured in a CBS News story. We need a leader! Exactly the kind of soldier the U.S. Army likes to showcase. Technically, you're not in combat. Technically. <laughs> what is it like to drive on those roads, always keeping an eye out for a roadside bomb? It's nerve-wracking. You don't know what's going to happen. But just months later, this was Margot, her face paralyzed by Bell's palsy. Her future husband, Brian, took this video while they were stationed in Iraq. So what's wrong with your face? Nothing. <laughs> Why can't you smile? I can smile just fine. See me blink. She had memory lapses, slurred speech, debilitating migraines. It's been a tough road for you. Most 24-year-olds don't go through things like that. You feel like you've lived enough life already? <laughs> I'm a 50-year-old and a 24-year-old's body. Margot suffers from severe TBI, traumatic brain injury. She was injured when her Humvee hit an IED. Besides the migraines and memory loss, she is always exhausted. I go home to visit my friends. They'll tell me, oh, you remember this? And I'm like, that didn't happen. No. They're like, yeah, it did. And I'm like, no, no, it didn't. I forget what dishwashers are called. I call them laundry machines. Mm -hmm. I forget all, I forget your name. Mm -hmm. So What's my name? I don't know. Carol. <laughs> okay. Margot's army doctors tried almost everything to help her. She even had brain surgery, but nothing has worked. There's one thing that the army refused to try and even attempted to stop active duty soldiers from trying. It's called hyperbaric oxygen therapy. HBOT for short. You all right? Good. Okay. Patients are exposed to pure oxygen one hour at a time in these airtight chambers. It is a treatment so promising, soldiers with TBI and PTSD have been literally sneaking down to this clinic outside of New Orleans where Dr. Paul Harch is studying HBOT. What is theorized is that there are damaged uh, brain cells that aren't yet dead, but are disabled. It's like uh, a car that's broken and can only go in first gear. And so then what does the oxygen do? Somehow this is restoring the energy metabolism capability of the cells. And For this good? has been shown, uh, apparently, yes. Yes. Iraq vet Matt Williams, who took a camera inside the chamber with him during a recent procedure, is also hoping that hyperbaric oxygen can help him overcome the damage his brain sustained during his tour in Iraq. The Army veteran experienced dozens of IED explosions. At 26 years old, he has the hearing of an old man. His short-term memory is so bad, Matt has to rely on sticky notes posted around the room. They remind him of things like brushing his teeth, taking his meds, and appointments. He's unable to hold down a job, unable to sleep. You know, you just sit here, watch TV, there's never anything on. So you end up watching reruns of the same show. I just don't really sleep. Matthew has been diagnosed with TBI, and like many veterans, he also has PTSD. He's currently on 11 different types of medication, including pills for depression, anxiety, and moods. But these drugs only treat the symptoms of his illness. There is no pill which heals a damaged brain. A lot of people around right now, walking around and Trying to keep my eye on everybody. Make sure nobody sneaks up. Matthew experiences severe anxiety in public places. He feels threatened by random hustle and bustle. He's paranoid, and after a short time in a local mall, Matthew is sweating, his heart pounding. Anxiety is hitting me right now. My palms are sweaty. And... So what's going through your mind right now? What do you want to do? Well, I kind of leave. I just want to. Yeah, I don't want to be here right now. 
Matt was in Iraq during one of the most intense times of the war, the end of 2005, and he was in the most dangerous place, the Sunni Triangle south of Baghdad. Now, this book, Black Hearts, came out in March and was written about Matt's regiment, which is called the Black Heart Brigade. During their deployment, these soldiers were either hit by or found nearly 900 IEDs. Many of them were killed, including three from Matt's own platoon who were surprised in an ambush. They were kidnapped, killed, mutilated, and drug around by a car. One of them was Matt's best friend. Menchaca was my best friend right there, and that's him right there. Menchaca. Yeah. Christian Menchaca. So, so your best friend had the worst thing? It happened to him. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a lot of blood, so I, I imagine one of them... I mean, they got dragged behind the vehicles for a good two and a half miles. So I'm hoping that they died pretty much mm -hmm. quick. Mm -hmm. You know, or went into shock and didn't really feel anything. Mm. Matthew, like so many veterans, has survivor's guilt. He believes he failed his brothers in arms who didn't make it home. The world of TBI and PTSD, he says, is a lonely one. It's pretty much... You're the only rock that's on the beach. Everything's smooth and you're just the one rock sitting there. Nightmares keep him awake. In one of them, his best friend who was murdered shows up, still alive. I saw him 20 minutes before that happened. I see him in my dreams all the time. I have dreams about it. And, you know, I've seen him like woken up. I've seen him at the end of my bed talking to me and stuff like that. You know, so. What does he say? He, he doesn't, I don't really know what he's saying, but he's just there, kind of freaks me out. And, you know, I, that's why I don't really sleep, because I don't, I don't want to, you know, have dreams. I don't want to have all that. When her Humvee was hit by an IED in December of 2006, Margot Manja's head hit the gun turret so hard she was knocked out. She quickly came to, dizzy and seeing stars, but was sent back into battle soon after that. In an email home, Margot wrote her parents about the headache she thought would go away. She said, Hello, Mom and Dad. I have cotton in my ears, and I am a wee bit jumpy. The concussion should be gone tomorrow, and the ringing in my ears should be gone in a week. I tell you, I am one lucky SOB. It turned out Margot wasn't lucky after all. As is often the case, her symptoms did not subside. They got much worse. After a few months, Margot, still in combat mode, developed Bell's palsy, a condition where half of her face was paralyzed and the eye on the numb side would not close. Can you smile for me? Is that good? Okay. Open and close your mouth. Finally, her health deteriorating, Margot left the Army in late 2008. And according to the Military Order of the Purple Heart, is one of the only women ever to receive the award for TBI. The Bell's palsy eventually went away, but the forgetfulness, severe headaches, and slurred speech did not. At the young age of 24, she couldn't work. She was 100% disabled. She and her husband, Brian, were even afraid to have children. I couldn't take care of a child that I'll forget about it. I won't, I won't want to do that with a child that my headaches would definitely hinder. Hinder, <laughs> it's got my back. Hinder my capability with dealing with a child. I'll just be like, I can't deal with you right now. Go see your dad. After a year of treatment by the Army and VA, Margot thought she was out of options and that she'd live the rest of her life disabled, until a veteran's advocate told her about the oxygen therapy, HBOT, and Dr. Paul Harch. We believe that there's a, a, a national emergency. Harch is a pioneer in the use of oxygen as a drug. It is used to treat acute carbon monoxide poisoning and to help repair damaged tissue in burns and diabetic foot wounds. Until recently, no one had tried to treat soldiers' brain injuries with oxygen. But as more and more veterans come back with TBI, by one estimate, there are 320,000. Dr. Harch thought it was worth a try. It's an underestimate of the numbers who are probably affected. And they're beginning to show up at homelessness, uh, jails, 
uh, you know, 